Well, to all of you here celebrating your pre-Cana today, we have 17 couples with us. I believe we had 19 couples in the class today. Just a very warm welcome once again as you prepare for your great day. I met many of you from many, many different areas. Got some close, I mean really close, just down the road, out in the countryside, Nathan down in there, some of them I'm preparing, but many of you from many different places. So a very, very warm welcome as we gather today. I'm going to talk today about the Ascension. We celebrate, we transfer Ascension to the Sunday. Normally it's celebrated 40 days after Easter. That means it's always would fall on a Thursday, but in our diocese we transfer it to the following Sunday. So what do we teach about the Ascension? Here's what our creed says. Now those of you Catholic, non-Catholic today, preparing for marriage, this is share some pieces here in common between our creeds. Here's what it says. I believe in Jesus Christ, who ascended into heaven, sitteth at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. They're the words of our creed. They are the specific words that we proclaim in regards to the feast we celebrate today, the ascension. I want to take a close look at these today, because some of the words I think we can figure out. These are the pieces that I think are pretty easy. From heaven, Jesus will come again. Now to you couples, let's just pretend your spouse comes up to you and says, you forgot my pizza again? All right, again? You forgot to wash clothes again? What's that mean? It's happened previously, right? Well, what do we say about Jesus? Jesus came the first time. It's a story of Bethlehem. Born in a crib, died on a cross, he ascends, and what do we say? He will come again. But this time a little different. His kingdom will know no end. Okay? Jesus is the final judge. He is the judge, everyone. Jesus is the one who will judge whether we live with him or we live without him. He's the judge of the living and the dead. He will judge who? The living and the dead. It's interesting. Do you mean to tell me, Father, it seems to say in our creed that Jesus will come when some of us are still living? Yes. Most will be dead, as we know, because we bury people we've loved. He will judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. That's interesting. Couples, when I prepare you for marriage, one of the things that I ask you is this, how long does your marriage last? Those of you who prepped, I should know this. Many of you say forever, and I say that's great, but that's not really what your vows say, do they? Your vows actually say what? Until death. And I pray that it be forever. From the standpoint, I, I pray 65 years from now, you're still side by side. But I also say this, what happens? One of you comes down with cancers and dies within five years. Then what? Can't marry again? Of course you can. Because it is until death. But when Jesus comes again, his kingdom will be forever. It's eternal. It knows no limits. It knows nothing like death. But then everyone, there's some fascinating parts to this whole idea of the ascension that are kind of confusing. And I want to take a little moment and look at it. We say this, he said it at the right hand of the Father. Now what do we mean by that? Symbolism. Okay, it's symbolism. The right hand. The right hand, everyone, is a place of prominence. Okay, if I came to your place and I was at the end of the table and one of you came and said, Father, come up here, sit at my right, right beside me. It's a place of prominence. It makes sense. Jesus suffered, died, and rose. So if we were going to give him a place of heaven, where would we put him in a place of prominence? Would we deserve to be at the right hand? Not really. But Jesus he suffered, died, rose, never sinned. That's what we mean. So at the right hand, the most prominent place in heaven, that's where he is. He sits. Sits does not mean this. You plop down and you do nothing. Now that I could talk to you guys about sometimes. <laughs> All right? 
get up and let's do something, right? Quit sitting there watching TV. So now what this means. We don't talk about he sits, he plops, and he does nothing. It means this. There's Jesus taking his place at the right hand and all of a sudden reigning. I want you to picture everyone, Father Schuster up in his chair, everyone, not sitting there doing nothing, but instead coming, you come to me, you listen. Father gives instructions. He gives you direction. You come to me, you say, Father, I want you to decide this case. That's my purpose. That's what Jesus does. He sitteth in that great seat, everyone, so that his kingdom can reign. It's a kingdom of activity. It's action. It is alive. Okay? It's not plot, nothing. It's active. Okay? To ascend. We get this all mixed up. This is what we think. To ascend. Some days you're going to feel like, I want to ascend my spouse someplace. Okay? <laughs> Shoot them off someplace. Okay? When you talk to people about what's the ascension mean to you, it means Jesus rose above the clouds, above the moon. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. That is completely wrong. You see, if we say to ascend means Jesus goes above the clouds, above the moon, you've still got him limited by time and space. Okay? To ascend does not mean that he goes above the stars. Nope. To ascend means this. He goes into a dynamic, into a domain that we've never even thought of. Something we can't comprehend. It is beyond time and space. It is beyond anything that we can speak of. And you know where that place is? We call it heaven. Okay? Where is heaven? Just beyond the stars? No. It's beyond what we can comprehend. It's beyond time and space. That is what the ascension means. Okay, Luke's gospel. What does he say today about the ascension? Interesting. Here it is. Luke's gospel begins in a temple and it ends in a temple. Here's the story. Again, to you couples, wouldn't this be great some days? Okay? I'm not trying to paint a bad picture here today, but some days. Okay? Luke's gospel begins with the story of Zechariah. Zechariah is in the temple burning incense. All of a sudden, an angel comes and says that you will give birth, your wife will give birth to a great man, John the Baptist. And what happens? Zechariah doubts. So what happens? He's silenced for months at a time. Wouldn't that be something if you could just push a button and it's on mute? <laughs> Moot? You can't, can't speak again? Begins in the temple. By golly, the end of the gospel today, the disciples go back to Jerusalem and where do they go? They go to the temple. Begins with the temple, ends with the temple. The place of prayer and worship, that's why we're here. Okay? They're also overjoyed. Now I will share this with you. If your spouse all of a sudden died three years from now, there would be deep sadness, deep pain. Why does Luke say they're overjoyed? For two reasons. First of all, the disciples finally got it. They realized that if Jesus was going to come, if he was going to establish his kingdom, he had to go to heaven. But they realized when he comes again, his kingdom will have no end. It will know absolutely no end. Here's the second reason, though, they were overjoyed, because they realized they were going to get something. Okay? Let's pretend your spouse says, I'm going to go out. I'm going to get you something. You're anticipating. Can't wait, can you? Can't wait. What is it? You know what they get, everyone? The Holy Spirit. Think about this. If Jesus never ascended, why would we need the Holy Spirit? Just go to Jesus. But nope. He said, I'm going to ascend, and when I ascend, I will give you a gift. And that gift is the Holy Spirit. And that's what gives us the power to go out into our world, and it gives us the power to act. By the way, what do we preach? Luke says it. Forgiveness and repentance. That's what he says today. Only Luke adds that note about the ascension. When we go out into the world, what do we preach? Forgiveness 
and repentance for the forgiveness of sins. One other group we should mention this weekend, shouldn't we, mothers? It's Mother's Day weekend. To all of you mothers, a very blessed and happy Mother's Day. Just to let you know, in many, many weddings that I have, okay, the one thing I like to mention is this, spouses, do you know what your ultimate goal is in life? To get your spouse to heaven. To get them to heaven. That means sometimes you've got to be firm. You've got to be loving, but that's your goal. Get them to heaven. Okay, and mothers, you know, when you think about your job responsibility, it's not bad either. Get your children to heaven. In what you say and what you do, by being disciplined, by being firm, by prayer, by encouragement. Get your child, children to heaven. That's your goal. Again, I keep coming back. Moms, you're not to be friends. You're to be mothers. Mothers. Okay? So congratulations to all of you. Okay? God bless all of you. It's an exciting time. Okay, we're going to close with a blessing for you guys, but let's pray for our mothers, and let's pray once again, everyone, now that we believe Jesus is ascended. He sits at the right hand of the Father, reigning, ruling, working. Let's go into the world with the Holy Spirit, and let's give the world the gift of the Holy Spirit. Forgiveness and repentance in the name of Jesus Christ.